So what's up you beautiful, beautiful people, it's the gaming dude, welcome back to another video, hope you're doing great. Today's gaming PC world is a lot different from the ones going to do. This PC specs are not groundbreaking by any means, but really great for the price. I was able to get this gaming PC for around $100. Okay, so this is not the most balanced system in the world. It's kind of overpowered in the GPU side. And I couldn't do any upgrades to the system because I've had a pretty old base system. But the GPU is actually pretty new. Yeah, compared to today's GPUs, it's still relevant. So if you raise the budget of your next gaming PC, this PC will be more well-rounded and you will have a more convenient and a smooth experience but not just in gaming but other things like doing some video editing or 3D rendering or anything like that I usually recommend something between the LGA 1156 and I mean the first gen i3s and i5s all the way up to LGA's 1366 where the Xeon 6 core processors lies that's in terms of the base system you'll get really great performance for a great price and I set the budget of your next gaming PC around $200 $150 <laughs> to give you good performance not just in gaming because you can pick a GPU like for a reasonable price that provides you really great performance even the GDX 750 at the time I'm recording is out of stock so you know you'll not find a lot of options maybe later and also you can build a Ryzen 3 2200G gaming PC for around like $250 so you can check out my video I'll leave it over there or there or maybe in the keep in mind that pretty much every gaming PC you build you'll encounter some kind of a problem but it like depends on how bad this problem is like is it in the hardware can you return this PC port back or you bought a used like PC port you can return back or you bought this new PC port international and you don't have anything but international warranty the country that you live in like, do not accept that they will not help you there are a lot of problems regarding getting a used PC port or even a new PC port so there will be some difficulties getting your money back if something went wrong but as much as my experience with used PC parts I didn't have anything that went wrong now for the CPU what were the Kuroqua Q8200 it's a capable CPU it's a full core CPU it's based on the LGA775 and yeah it's pretty decent it will do fine with the 2018 AAA titles or maybe games like Fortnite or PUBG or anything like that it will do pretty fine it's around five to ten dollars <laughs> if you didn't get it with a pre-built PC and it performs really well there isn't a huge difference between you know the other models of the Kuro Quad CPUs so you're not stuck there you can't go with anything fine for a good price now we couldn't overclock this CPU because of the board uh, we have a G31M ES2C I believe board based on the LGA775 socket of course it does support overclocking but every time I overclock the CPU the PC doesn't post any signal and that's because I believe there is something wrong in the CMOS battery and it needs to be charged or something like that I didn't do it because I was like hours away from selling the GPU while I was testing actually the PC so yeah I didn't have much time but it's a problem that can be easily solved as for the RAM we only went with 4GB of DDR2 RAM and I don't recommend going with 4 gigs anymore if you're doing anything like video editing and especially gaming games like Fortnite, PUBG won't run that well on 4 gigs of RAM, maybe Fortnite will, but PUBG won't. I couldn't go with anything over that, but that is because of the motherboard, it only has two uh, DIMM slots and you can't find two 4GB DDR2 sticks. Which brings us to, I believe, the GPU. 
it's the AMD XFX version RX 460. I got this GPU I believe a year ago for around $70. You can get it for that price now but I believe something like an HD 787 can give a performance equivalent to it or you can even get a GDX 750 Ti if you couldn't find that HD 787. I mean at least the 750 Ti will not be as bottlenecked as this one and it will perform really well in CSGO and PUBG you know. Back at the day you could have easily got a really powerful GPU but right now it's not that easy so I recommend you pay more on the base system and get a cheaper GPU that provides really great price per performance and I refer to the GDX 750 Ti right now I believe you can get it uh, for around $50 like EVGA was selling a B stock uh, GPUs including the 750 Ti for like $50 and the 780 Ti which is I believe as powerful as the RX 580 or even better at other times it was for around $80 which is insane you know so yeah you'll find really great deals regarding the 750 Ti. As for the power supply, I went with a generic one that came with the case. So I believe it's 400 watts or something like that. And I used the Molex to 6 pin connector that came with the GPU. But an advice, do not cheap on power supplies because this might destroy your GPU, your hard drive. I mean, I've lost two hard drives because I've used a dead Molex to SATA connector. So yeah, a recommendation to you, get a decent power supply or at least test it on spare ports before you put it on your brand new gaming PC or something like that. And that's it for the second part of this video, let's get to the third one. So the benchmarks, mostly I decided to game at 1440p, so yeah that's a capable 1440p gaming PC, luckily, so let's jump to the games. First up PUBG, and I don't have PUBG, so I looked online and I found the benchmarks of the GDX 1050 and the Core Quad Q6600, so you will get comparable performance to that. But all we need to know is surely that PUBG is 100% playable on this gaming PC which is crazy for the price if you ask me. Don't expect to get solid 60 frames per second, somewhere around 30-35 frames per second. I mean he played that 900p low settings, but you know it's still playable. In CSGO we couldn't go over 70 frames per second at any settings or resolution and that's either an optimization problem or a CPU bottlenecking or the game requires more RAM but keep in mind two things that this game is pirated and the CPU is not overclocked so you need to get a better CPU if you don't want to have any risks and CSGO is your main game but here we are right now at 4k medium settings with 60 frames per second which is pretty playable in Fortnite low settings 1080p we were around 60 67 frames per second but keep in mind Fortnite uh, running Nvidia GPU is better than AMD so a GDX 750 Ti for example can get better frame rates than that but also the following gameplay was played at 1080p high actually and that's why it's around 30 frames per second the driver updates uh, will give better results because I was running on an old driver I believe before the launch of this game so again keep that in mind I was selling the GPU like hours before testing that game so I could and download the new drivers and you know the process will take too much time now one of the best games ever tested was GDA V high settings in 4k we got around 30 frames per second which is better than any console you can easily get 60 frames per second in 1080p or even 1440p but I was very satisfied with the quality of the game and I was so hooked on to it as it's the first time I actually played GDA V four years after the release like day Rainbow Six Siege an old game but a lot of people play it and in 1080p medium settings, I got around 60 frames per second, mostly there was a CPU bottleneck as you can see, but the gameplay was smooth and there wasn't a lot of micro stutters or frame rates dipping to single digits as it was a great experience to say the least. Witcher 3 Wild Hunt at 1080p ultra settings and I got 27 frame rates as an average. I tested that game before yes, but there was other gameplay at 1440p mid to low settings where I got 30 frames per second too, but something went wrong with with exporting it as I was recording with AMD Radeon Relay. As it's not taxing on the CPU or the GPU, I'm glad that AMD finally made a competitor to Nvidia Shadowplay as it was very useful to me. Last but not least to me, Agents of Mayhem and I got a solid 30 frames per second within the gameplay at 1440p medium settings and 1080p high settings. I really like that game, it was very entertaining to me, you should check it out. So the verdict, I am really happy with the performance I got with the GPU 
and the PC like the GPU is hands down one of the best 1080p experience I've ever had if not the best I've had like I haven't got anything higher than this and yeah I am pretty satisfied with the performance for the price I was able to play any game at 1080p ultra settings maybe some bottlenecking you know but still I was able to play any game I wanted for $100 and I believe $100 is not a lot but if i went back in time i would have got a base lga 1156 system or something higher than this i believe a second gen i5 would do the trick for me but you know that's about me let me know what you think down in the comments below press on that subscribe button so you can help me reach 1000 subscribers and i know it's impossible to happen right now but you will be helping me a lot I i'd love you for that follow my twitter if you think i'm a cool person because i am even though i'm not showing it in the camera but I'm cooler than you think. I'm cooler than you. Yeah, yeah, I'm really, I'm a, I'm a really funny person. Like, I have a really big... So yeah, thank you for watching. I hope you've learned a thing or two. I hope you liked that video as I said before. And uh, yeah, peace.